Good morning. All right, real estate can be such a volatile market. That's why here on our Revolution Mortgage Facebook page, we like to keep you as informed as possible. So we've been doing the real estate updates on an every other week basis, and I'm so excited to have this group of ladies with us today. They have truly have a thumb on the pulse of our community, all being natives from our area. And so we're excited to talk to them at this edition of Meeting with Extraordinary Minds Market, or excuse me, Real Estate Update and more. So let me introduce you to the ladies that I have with me today. I have Ashley Morrison. She is an attorney with the Bellamy Law Firm. Welcome, Ashley. We have Casey Haranzi. She is a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway. Hey, Casey, thanks for joining us. And then we have our very own Carrie Smith, Carrie Martin Smith, excuse me, who is a loan officer with us here at Revolution Mortgage in Myrtle Beach. Welcome, ladies. Yes. So I am so excited to talk to you three, um, not only just to kind of catch up with you all, but these three have grown up together. They've been friends for a long time, and they will definitely be able to give us an insight on what's going on. So Casey, we're going to go ahead and start with you being our resident real estate uh, agent here on our call. Just if you could give us a snapshot of what has been going on, you know, kind of how March ended, how you um, project April to end, and how you are doing um, in this market. Thank you so much. I would love to talk about that. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, so it's been really interesting. We've been kind of studying the numbers every day. And um, Mar since March 13th, which is kind of when I started um, the start date for what we've been tracking, and to even till today, about between 35 and 50 properties, residential properties, are hitting the market every day. And then about that same amount are coming off the market every day, going pending, going under contract. So, um, you know, some days it's higher than others, but it's kind of been in that range and it's been fairly steady. So it's, uh, you know, since, since March 13, we've actually had over 1,100 closed transactions. I'm sure Ashley's wow. done a lot of it. <laughs> and, um, and Carrie too. And, and with new listings, we've had over 1,400 properties residential properties hit the market here, wow. um, which is really encouraging. Um, and then we have right now currently just overall over 1,800 that are pending to hmm. close. So um, I bring these numbers up because I think it's really exciting. I think one of the best things that we can do right now is educate our um, our clients and customers and, and to let them know what's happening here. And in Myrtle Beach, it's not stopping. Um, you know, Whoever is, is doing something right now, buying or selling, they're doing it because they have a goal. They're, they're motivated by that goal to either get in that house or get that property sold. No one's really messing around right now, just testing things out. So it's, it's the people who need to do something that are doing it right now, and they're doing it strong. That's great. It's so good to hear. I mean, every week we've heard that it's been, it's still been strong and it's still going. So we love that because in, in a market, you, you don't know what's happening, especially when you're, you know, stuck inside your home. Carrie, yeah. I, I know we've been seeing kind of the similar, what does it look like? Um, you know, kind of, you had the numbers through March and into April. Sure. Um, for March, um, I mean, it was pretty much dominated by refinancing. Um, rates were so incredibly, like ridiculously low. Um, that most people took advantage of that. Um, and those are still dominating um, in April as well. But the rates are still historically low, um, not as crazy low as they were in like late February, but um, they represented about 55% of closed loans in March. Um, and, you know, purchases have slowed down a little bit, uh, but I think that's just from people not being able to actually go and you know, pull the trigger um, and see the actual house in person. Right. But uh, but there's, like Casey said, I mean, the ones that are listing and buying, they have a need. So um, I think it's going to pick right back up with purchases uh, in probably a month or so. That's great. And Ashley, are you kind of seeing the similar? I agree with what Casey and Carrie said. I do the end part of this whole process, the closings of the loans and the purchases and sales. And we're still busy. We're still seeing people buying, selling. And I do echo what Carrie said. There are a lot of refinances that have been going on because of the low rates. So I think those two definitely have a handle on what's going on in this area. Yeah. It's feeding you those closings. It's really good. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, well, there's a topic that a lot of people have asked questions about. And um, Carrie, I wanted you to kind of just talk a little bit about what it is. So forbearance is the word that everybody kind of keeps hearing. So you want to just tell us exactly like what forbearance is and um, what does it mean and how could it affect um, buyers? Yeah, absolutely. So um, forbearance is just putting a pause on your mortgage payments. Um, depending, it can go up to 12 months, but hopefully people don't need it for that long. Um, typically it's about a few months and it's just for while you're out of work um, because of coronavirus. And depending on who is servicing your loan, interest can still accrue during the forbearance period. Um, and that can actually increase the overall cost of your mortgage. So one of the most important things to remember, and I think the biggest source of confusion for people is that forbearance is not forgiveness. So you will still have to pay it back. Um, so if you're still getting a paycheck, uh, make that mortgage payment. Um, and then and another important thing is to those rules for forbearance can vary depending on who's actually servicing your loan. So make sure to reach out to your mortgage company, um, the company that services your loan, the one that you get the bill from in the mail um, to pay your mortgage. Yeah, that's, I mean, great advice. Cause I mean, a lot of people don't know. They think that, oh, well, I can just pause everything and I'm okay, but interest still accrues. Everything still kind of happens. You're just going to need, you just can just pause it for a moment, but you still got to pay all that, right? That's right. Yeah. So Casey, what does it look like if I wanted to buy or sell my home right now? Kind of what are the procedures that you guys are doing? You know, how is that working right now? Oh, she froze a oh. little bit. We'll get her back here. <laughs> well, I can actually ask you, Ashley, if you want to, while we wait for her to pop back on. Oh, there she is. Go ahead, Casey. You kind of froze for a moment. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm You're good. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just asking. So if, if I wanted to buy or sell a house right now, what, what does that look like? Kind of what is the procedures that you guys are doing? Um, how, does, how are you interacting with your clients? You know, kind of what does that look like? It's really interesting right now. It's, um, it, it, it can be fun and challenging. We try to make it as, as, as fun as we can for our <laughs> clients. And, um, so we're, we're having to do walk through virtual tours, videos, FaceTime, Zoom, however many people need to be on the call while we're walking through the house. <clears throat> um, we're doing a lot of screen sharing when we're going through contracts and helping people walk through the signing, the e-signing process. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of what we're doing right now, uh, we've been doing for years. I've had investor clients or second home people that have, have, you know, I've been taking videos for years. So it's kind of cool that none of this is, is totally different. It's just, we're having to, um, figure out how to get even better at mm -hmm. it and more efficient and higher quality videos and, and just try to always be taking it to the next level. But that's pretty much it. A lot of it is happening virtually and, um, and just, you know, touring things like that as far as the buyers. And then for sellers, we're obviously having to provide that same service um, for the, the properties that we're trying to market and sell and um, just being able to get out in front of people as much as we can through social media. And, um, you know, it's like we have we have a little bit more time now to work on the back end of our website. And it's like everything was going so, so fast. So now it's, we're able to go there and tweak things and just make sure everything is um working as, as top notch as it possibly can. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it does. And I, I know in this area, I mean, we work a lot or you guys work a lot with buyers from out of market. So, you know, you had a little bit of a upper hand than probably most of the other areas of the country to have the virtual tour is kind of the idea and the knowledge behind it. But totally ramp it up now for sure. And actually, I mean, what does it look like? So they go through that buying process and now it's time to close, which is usually a very personal experience. And you have all those law documents that you have to, you know, kind of get signed in person and everything. How, how are you guys working through that? We're continuing to do closings in person. However, there's just a little bit different. We're um, obviously not allowing the outside into our office to sit down at the conference room table um, what we're doing is we're offering a few different things. If people want to close through the mail, which we've always done, FedExing packages to people. Since a lot of our um, clients are from out of town, we do that a lot. And that has continued and that really hasn't changed at all. What has changed is the people that do come to my office in person, we're doing the closings in the parking lot. I know it sounds a little crazy. However, <laughs> it's gone very smoothly We've been able to continue to provide the closing services that we've always provided. 
and give that personal touch to it as well. The attorney and the paralegal go out into the parking lot with the closing package. The clients stay in their car and I will stand six feet to 10 feet at a social distance away from them and explain the documents. So I don't feel like anything really has changed with the personal experience. They're getting an explanation from the attorney. Um, they just have to do it in their car or outside. And most of the clients have actually enjoyed being outdoors. We're so lucky to live in an area with great weather and um, they've enjoyed kind of having that fresh air and just a little bit different experience. And we're just super excited. We're still able to pro provide the same services that we always have during this, this crazy time. Yeah, for sure. And then Carrie, so what advice would you have for someone that is looking to buy right now and, you know, looking at different rates and what's going, going on for their loans? So I think the best advice would be that um, rates are still historically low. So if you get a, and can get a great rate right now, go ahead and lock it in, um, jump on it. And, um, you know, if you're at home right now, it's an easy time for you to kind of gather up all the documents that you need um, to make it happen. So that, and then also just to just be very careful with your credit because credit right now is having good credit is more important than ever. Um, there's a lot of tightened guidelines uh, across the board. It's about 100 points higher than it was before. Um, so just don't make it's while we're at home. It's real easy to pull the trigger on all those Amazon purchases, <laughs> um, but um, and shopping. Um, but for people that are you know looking to purchase a home, a lot of times they'll um, make big purchases with furniture packages, and that can actually affect their credit. So just hold off on big purchases like buying a new car, a boat, um, furniture packages, things like that, so that um, your credit will be strong enough to get you away. That makes sense. I was like, you know, you're spending that big ticket. You're like, oh, we'll just put a boat next to it and get all brand new oh. furniture. <laughs> I'm bored. Let's, let's shop. Yeah, exactly. I don't like any of this stuff. Sell it all. Um, that's great advice for sure. So now that we've kind of seen a picture of what's been going on, I wanted to kind of find out from you guys, like this time, obviously we've been, you know, over a month in and there has been so many ups and downs. I know for sure, even just in what we've been doing, I wanted to find out kind of what your struggles and successes have been um, that we can hopefully kind of give some advice even for some of our colleagues. So Ashley, you know, I wanted to ask you if you guys had any struggles or successes that you guys have come up against that um, have either, you know, worked or obviously you found out didn't work. Well, I think our struggles actually have worked out to be successes. Mainly, we first of all struggled with how to figure out how we can do closings and provide the service to the client, even though the social distancing is in effect and some of these stay-at-home orders are in effect. And as I already discussed with the parking lot closings and the mail closings, we've been able to overcome that. And I think we're actually doing a great job with that. Mm -hmm. The biggest struggle I see with some of the closings is – on and is from the standpoint of getting a notary. A lot of these clients, especially if closings through the mail, um, they're in areas that have been really hard hit by coronavirus. They're stay at home orders in effect. They can't find notaries. South Carolina has not yet passed the statute to allow for electronic notaries. So no notarizing over FaceTime or Zoom calls or anything like that. You actually have to be physically present. So that has been a struggle that a lot of our clients have run into and we're trying to help People, you know, find mobile notaries that can come to their home. And luckily, the people that are in person or in my parking lot are able to have us do the notary, notarizing for them. So that's one struggle we've had. And I think just overall maintaining the level of professionalism and the same services we provided before the coronavirus and keeping that up. It's taken a lot of work from our staff and attorneys. We have people working remotely, people in the office, and just trying to keep all that together and keep things going at the same time, providing the same service for our clients. So I think our struggles actually, like I said, have now become our success because we've been able to manage it very well. Yeah, that's great. You know, kind of seeing, you know, what's come from the ashes to be able to, you know, work out and, and manage things. Casey, I know, I mean, you work with a lot of realtors and I'm sure they come to you and get advice and everything. You know, what, what are you seeing from them, struggles or successes that they are gaining? Well, what I see a, a lot of agents, um, you know, in our company and also in the other ones that we, that we talk with all the time is, is I, I see a lot of people trying to, 
I think most of us have kind of worked through these virtual and technical and jumping on board with this or that if we weren't doing it before. But I see a lot of agents really pushing, um, you know, ourselves to be better humans and agents. And so it's been really nice because we can't, we're all, let's be honest, we're all people, people, people here. And so there's been a struggle of like not having that interaction as much like in the office or even with your clients or, or with these one, you know, you guys. And so it's been nice to see, we've all been trying to connect more like this. And it's, um, it, it's great to see everybody trying to sharpen their skills. You know, we're doing coaching virtually now and you know, just like this. So it, it's nice to see everybody kind of taking it to the next level because the better we are, um, with ourselves, the better we can be for our clients and for our agents. And so that's been, um, something I've noticed that I've, I've seen a lot of the, the top agents really just honing in on their skills and um, sharpening their mindset constantly. Yeah, that's good. I was like, you have the time, you know, hit those um, webinars, hit those, you know, trainings if you can. Um, since you're not going out, you don't have to spend the extra time in the travel. You can utilize that yeah. time to sharpen your toolbox for sure. Carrie, what kind of struggles have you been having? And I know we've had some good successes. Yes, we have. Um you know, other than the kind of the homeschooling and household distractions, um, <laughs> the struggle. Um, professionally, I mean, I just I think the biggest struggle is just the tightened guidelines for you know having to turn away people um, because their credit's not good enough right now. Um, or, uh, I mean, the biggest one is just dealing with borrowers facing unemployment issues, um, the uncertainty uncertainty of their future income yeah. um, is obviously a big struggle, but. Success wise, I mean, March was Revolution Mortgage's um, biggest uh, month that they've ever had. So, you know, going into this, it was kind of strange because it was like such a weird time and we're all supposed to be, you know, like scared and depressed, but it's, it was really a great time for us um, as a company. Um, And then personally, it was my biggest month yet too. Um, and April, it, I'm still kind of on an upward swing. I've had closings, and I'm just really fortunate to be able to do my job um, from home. I can do my job remotely from start to finish. Um, I can pre-qualify borrowers on their phone, um, and I can, you know, get all their documents through email. And I mean, my borrowers and I text each other back and forth. So, um, and then I get communicate with the paralegal and the attorneys and the real estate agents, you know, this way or cell phones. I mean, so it's been, um, you know, I'm fortunate. So I don't really feel like I can complain. Um, there's been a lot of success while we've been helping. Yeah. Which is great. I was like, and you don't, don't apologize. It was like, that's good. I was, it is hard though. Cause you know that there's so many people struggling, but they, yeah. you know, can see the hope that it is people are still moving and people are still spending money in our market. So they're still, you know, providing that we can then put that money back into the area, you know, in other ways so that we can keep our economy thriving. Um, with all that going on and with all these messages out there and restaurants putting out messages and real estate agents putting out messages and businesses putting out messages, and it's mainly on social media. Casey, how are you making sure that your messages are out there and they're cutting through all that noise? Great question. Um, so, you know, yes, obviously on social media. Um, I, one thing I think we're really trying to do is um, stay in touch with our clients, who a lot of them are here in this community. And so while I think all of that is great and we are, you know, we're pushing through that, I also feel like staying that personal touch and staying in touch with with your community members and reminding them that you are a resource here, um, staying in touch with your past clients. I think that that is, you know, and telling them about what's going on and bringing that value. I mean, we all know that when a real estate transaction happens, I mean, how many people are employed oh my from start to right. finish? So, you know, we are in some ways we're, we're part of essential to keeping the economy going and we're all very blessed that we have the opportunity to do the jobs that we do. And so, uh, you know, part of that is just, you know, helping with um, charities or, you know, just being in touch with our community and just, we all have roots here. Um, So just like really staying in front of them, um, not just on the screen, but also with a phone call, handwritten note. Um, Obviously we can't really visit people. So just really staying in front of people that way. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like people appreciate and it's very personal still 
while everything else kind of seems virtual right now. Yeah, for sure. Carrie, I know you've been kind of doing some of the sim work, right? Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, obviously the social media posting and videos, um, video is where it's at. So trying to do as much of that as possible. Um, but also um, with Revolution, and I have a group, Sunny Salty Secrets, that I do marketing with. And we've been raising money for doctors and nurses on the front line, working with local restaurants and nonprofits, and just really promoting other businesses in the community. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like what Casey said, just um, I, I think from, by promoting them, you know, selfishly, we're still kind of promoting ourselves. But, um, but that's kind of, I think, the best way to, to do it at this point. And, um, and then to also mix up the content that you are posting, um, you know, not just the same sales pitch kind of post every single time, um, just kind of do a variety uh, of that. But Casey said the handwritten note, and I think that that's one of the greatest, easiest things that we could all do. Um, and like she said, to make it feel personal and not so social media, you know, other than social media and those type of things to actually make a connection. Um, Elizabeth Ferraro, um, a friend of mine um, who owns uh, Rivertown Property Inspections, I sent her a note and she called it Happy Mail. And she was like, oh, I mean, it makes it, you feel so good to get something other than a bill in the mail. So, um, you know, it really does go a long way to send some happy yeah, I love that. I was like, and that's the thing is like people don't even, you know, it's it's like a, a pastime to to do that and you get in the mail. And I know, I was like, my daughter got a letter from one of her girlfriends from school. It was like kindergarten and they're, you know, wanting to send letters and it just, it was, it made her so happy that, I mean, she goes and gets the mail and it's all of our stuff, but that kind of thing. And you'd feel that giddy feeling as an adult too, when you see your name on it and it's not written in type and through a little like window and you're like, oh, I don't want this. But it's <laughs> something that's a, a sweet message. Uh, Ashley, you kind of, you guys are, you know, keeping in touch with people still as well? I think exactly what Carrie and Casey said, just maintaining that connection with your clients, with the other people in the community. A lot of our business comes from word of mouth and referrals from people like Casey and Carrie and the real estate industry and the lending industry and just maintaining those connections with the people that are handling those transactions that ultimately refer them to us and then keeping in touch with clients again like Barry and Casey both said emails phone calls personal notes Mm -hmm. um staying active in the community our law firm has been very active in this community for many many years while we can't physically go out and see people and and um, visit with people we do try to maintain the charities that we're involved in again and a lot of the things that we're doing to give back to the community our law firm actually is just starting a um, to offer lower rates on residential closings and refinances for frontline workers such as health care health care workers and first responders so we really want to give back to the community because they you know they are doing so much on the front lines and and We'd love to be able to help them through their closing process. So things like that. We're just trying to stay actively involved in every aspect that we can and keep in touch. Yeah, we love that. I mean, we all forget that the, you know, the charities that we work with, the nonprofits in our area, they, you know, they thrive on some of the uh, big events that they have. And now they're going to have to turn and do smaller things virtually. If we can still give back, we should definitely be giving back. That's I love that. So, I mean, we've kind of talked a lot about business and stuff like that, and I want to turn a little bit personal. So I know I was like, I have a hard time because I love being in the community. I love being a part of networking events and, you know, kind of getting to know people, very people person oriented. And I know the three of you guys are as well, especially being, you know, kind of close as friendships as you are. So trying to keep it all together. I mean, you guys are strong working women that hold it all together on a daily basis in in general, but then having kids at home, exactly, get it, girl, um, <laughs> having kids at home and doing the homeschooling and still working a full-time job, I just wanted to know kind of what or how you have any small tricks of the trade that you guys have, like, learned or what have you learned about yourselves throughout this whole process? Carrie, I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> I, I would say that this is, these are things that we can all do. Wake up, make your bed. Um, making your bed is so important. Um, it doesn't seem like it is, but it really is. It kicks off the start of your day. Um, morning devotional, and then uh, put a little makeup on, 
maybe an outfit, <laughs> at least from the waist up, do your hair every now and then. It does make you feel better. And I have a much more productive day if I um, feel, you know, a little bit more like myself. Mm -hmm. Done up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Ashley, Casey, what do you guys think? I think just being patient and understanding that this is an unprecedented time and we're all in this together. Every one of us are going through the same struggles, dealing with children at home. None of us are teachers. So trying to learn how to do this homeschool thing has been a real challenge. Um, while most of us are working remotely some and in the office some, trying to maintain flexibility, communication with your spouse. I know my husband has really had to help me with the kids more than normal. We've had to take turns as to who's going to go into the office today, who's going to stay home and work. And I think just trying to communicate with your family and your kids and, and staying patient and knowing that you're not alone. There's so many other moms out there in, in the world that are doing this and we're all in it together and we're all going to get through it. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly said. Casey? I, I agree with both with what they have both said. Um, the only, I guess I could add to that is um, for me at least is, is just spending a few minutes um, to the night before to plan for the next day um, because there's nothing like waking up and not knowing what's going on or what's going to happen. Or who, So when there's a lack of communication between you and your spouse or you, or for me, what I, if I haven't planned, I have to be flexible. We realize that, but I have to plan certain chunks where certain things need to happen. Um, so that has been huge. I've, I've always kind of tried to do that, but that is like a deal breaker right now. That has to happen. Um, so that has been huge. And I, I echo what Carrie said about the devotion in the morning. Um, I think whatever, if you have to get up a little bit earlier to have some personal time, I know for me, um, before the kid, before 7 a.m., I'm, I'm, you know, that that's me. That's me and God. That's me and me. Um, that's me with my goals. And so that is just such a precious time. And so whether it's 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., I just, I have to have that. And it makes me um, such a better person. Another, another thing that I've done recently is I have this power hour with some some great friends of mine all over the United States. We just come together for like an hour in the mornings and we do affirmations. We work out, we stretch, we do some breathing and visualization. And I cannot tell you what a difference that has made in my mindset throughout this whole thing. It's, um, I encourage people to just have a little bit of time for yourself. And then I agree, be flexible, plan, and, um, and just, yeah, everybody, we're all in this together. So <laughs> Those Communication are, is key, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you find that it's like, you know, you, you, I, usually, I used to live and breathe by my calendar. You know, events here, run yeah. this here, pick up the kids here. You know, my husband's got this going on, all that. But I have found myself, my calendar has fallen by the wayside. And I've just, it's been hard to remember. I'm like, I need to get back on scheduling and planning everything out. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, oh my gosh, you know, my daughter has a Zoom call or I have a Zoom call or jump on there, you know, like let's run over here and do this or drop your homework off when you need. I mean, there's still a lot going on and we are still all so busy, even though we are in our four walls. So, yeah. um, you know, living by that calendar still and all the great advice that you guys have given today has been so awesome. Um, I want to give each one of you kind of a moment if you want to kind of give some, um, where people can find you if they have real estate questions, um, closing questions, you know, questions about their loan. Um, if each one of you kind of want to go around, Casey, you can start with, um, how people can contact you or follow you in any way. Sure. Okay, uh, Instagram, it's it's just my name, Casey Haranzi. Well, that's a hard one to spell. You'll <laughs> look at the, the Facebook post. Um, obviously, I'm on Facebook, same name, or Haranzi Group. Um, our our website is haranzi.numeralbeachrealestate.com. You can find properties there. And, um, of course, myself, um, you'll write that up, 222-4147. But I, I just also really quickly want to say that, you know, um, this is not the first time that our economy has seen something crazy. I mean, obviously this is sort of a weird one that we've never seen like these parameters before, but as from like a mark real estate market standpoint, I mean, nine 11, there's been so many things in the past. So just, you know, make sure whoever it is you're working with that, that you've got the confidence in them that you, um, there's a high level of communication and that they know what's going on. They know what red flags to look for in your process because, um, there, we can all get through this together. Um, so just keep that communication up and, 
and just know that this is not the first time we've all been through this and we will get through this together. Yeah, I agree for sure. Ashley, you want to give your credentials? Sure. Um, our website is the main way to find out more about us and all the attorneys at the office. We're actually a full service law firm. So we've talked a lot about real estate, but our law firm practices in pretty much area, every aspect of the law. So if you need other, if your clients need help with wills, um, trust, business, um, we've helped people with the small business loans that have been going on. So a lot of, um, all of that is on our website. It's bellamylaw.com. We're also on Facebook. And I personally am on Facebook and Instagram as well. And I can give my cell phone number out or I, you can, however you're going to do that. Um, and my email is amorrison at bellamylaw.com. We're happy to help anybody with any real estate or other legal needs. Okay, fantastic. And Carrie? I just say the best way to reach me, um, you're obviously watching this on Facebook. So just message me um, and, uh, and reach out directly to me that way. Um, my cell and contact information is on my Facebook profile page, so they can grab that there, um, or they can go to revolutionmortgage.com or um, Smith at revolutionmortgage.com. All right. Email. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate all you ladies. I know how busy you are. So taking this um, time this morning to talk with us and share just kind of your struggles and, and your successes and, and the many successes that you have. So I'm so happy to uh, have had this time with you. And I really appreciate you sharing all of the information that you have and the great advice that you've shared both personally and professionally. Um, and I want to thank all of our viewers and I appreciate everyone jumping on and kind of sharing their comments and suggestions for other um, meetings with Extraordinary Minds. And we're excited to do these. We will see you back here on Thursday at 9, 10, same time every, every day or every Tuesdays and Thursdays, excuse me. And we're excited about our show on Thursday where we are going to be talking with um, four really great women who are servicing our special needs community and how they're doing that right now through the pandemic and beyond and what, how we can do to help them. So, meet us back here 9 10 right here on our Facebook live um, where we're going to talk to those individuals so you ladies all have a great day and thank you guys for watching